What's growing on, gardeners? It's Tuesday, June 27th, and the pepper plants are starting to produce here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I want to share with all of you three varieties of peppers that I am fully obsessed with, that I simply must grow in my garden every single year because they are just that good. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you have ever grown pepper plants before or if you've even stepped foot inside a grocery store, then you know of very common pepper varieties like bell peppers and jalapeno peppers which you see in this plant right here. But part of being a gardener that is most fun is growing things that we cannot easily get in grocery grocery stores and I want to share with you three varieties of peppers that you may have never had before that are still common and easier to get that are just so much better than what we're typically used to. One of the hardest peppers for me to find is a truly versatile sweet pepper, something that is good for fresh eating and salads but is also good for stuffing roasting, stir fries, and also pickled. It's not easy to find a sweet pepper that can do it all. And that is why every single year, I have to grow some type of banana pepper in my garden. And this sweet banana pepper, after years of searching, is clearly one of the best. And that variety of banana pepper is the Bounty Hybrid. The Bounty Hybrid may be one of the best varieties of banana peppers out there in existence. It's certainly the best that I've ever seen. Every single one of those yellow green peppers that you see hanging off those plants are bounty peppers. So they live true to the name. And the most wonderful thing is these are only the lowest flower clusters. These plants are only getting started. And if you look up top, they are still continuing to flower and they will continue to flower and fruit throughout the season. As I pick those big fruits off of the plants, that will free up more energy for them to flower and fruit even more. They are outrageously productive. Banana peppers do tend to be pretty productive. However, it's unusual to find ones that are both large and productive. And that's what makes Bounty so great. They are truly bountiful. And I'm going to pick this monster fruit right here and hopefully you can see just how large this pepper is right now. Because this pepper is so large, you can stuff it and it's thick walled enough that you can slice it and you can use it as an alternative to a bell pepper in salads. I used to grow bell peppers, but generally speaking, bell peppers only produce, what, four to six peppers on an entire plant. So I got tired of dealing with those pepper plants that only yield a small number of fruits over the course of the season. And they have such long ripening times as well. These banana peppers set tremendous number of fruits just like you saw and the best part about them is they pump out those fruits very quickly and they reach maturity in a fraction of the amount of time as a bell pepper. So they keep producing over and over again. I would say in less than half the amount of time. So you can keep picking these and the plants will just produce more and more. And they are so versatile you can use them fresh in salads, you can stuff them, you can roast them, you can turn them into pickles, you can use them for stir fry. They're just great. So since I started growing these I no longer grow bell peppers anymore. There's just no need for my personal tastes. The second pepper plant that I am completely obsessed with is a hot pepper plant that I stumbled across completely by accident, and that is a variety called Garden Salsa. I stumbled across it at my local Home Depot seven years ago when I lived in Pennsylvania before I moved down to North Carolina. And this was back in the day when the Bonnie plants at Home Depot were only $2.28 a piece. It feels like an eternity ago, I think they now cost about $50 a piece. But I digress. I love the way the pepper plant looked on the tag and I went out and I bought it and I was simply blown away by the production of the plant and also the quality of the peppers. So impressed with the plant was I that I actually dug it up and I put it in a pot and I drove it down with me when I moved to North Carolina and I overwintered that pepper plant for three years and I kept eating off of it. And the reason why I did that was Bonnie stopped stocking the plant at Home Depot or Lowe's. I couldn't find it anywhere but luckily since then the seeds have become readily available and ever since then I have been growing it in my garden and I can't wait to show it to you. The garden salsa pepper plant is so outrageously productive that I only need to plant two of them in my garden. So if we cut through my pepper jungle right here the peppers that you see on that plant right there are all garden salsa. Just look at them all. The yields are absolutely ludicrous and if I pull back this plant 
right behind it, you can see another garden salsa pepper plant with absolutely ludicrous yields of peppers. You can see the yields even better from this angle. This plant is just chock full of peppers. It is silly how productive the plants are. And I can't wait to pick one of them for you. I'm gonna get this really nice, big, mature one right here. You can tell it's mature because it has a lot of veins in the peppers. And when they get veiny like that, that means they are going to be super hot. The reason why I love this hot pepper so much is because of its versatility. It's difficult to find a hot pepper that is good both raw chopped up in fresh salsas, but also is good cooked in stir fries and that doesn't alter the flavor too much. And something like a jalapeno, for example, while that's really good in salsas, it's not really a great versatile all around pepper. And sometimes I just like something that's a little bit more interesting than a standard jalapeno. So here is the garden salsa pepper compared to that bound hybrid banana pepper so you can see just how large it is. These are big peppers and you can get a lot of uses out of this. However, I will warn you, it is considerably hotter than a jalapeno, probably about two to three times hotter. It's closer to something like a serrano, but because it's so large, it's really great to use in stir fries and it also makes amazing pickled hot peppers. Now, if you've never made pickles or pickled peppers before, you can make a master brine simply by using one cup of white vinegar, one cup of water, and one tablespoon of salt, and you use that as your base brine, and then you just expand it with whatever serving size you need. And then you can alter it with flavors like dill, or with sugar, or mustard seed, or turmeric, or black pepper, or whatever else you want to use to alter the flavor. So all you do is you take that brine, you bring it up to a boil on your stove, and then while it's coming up to a boil, you slice your peppers or your cucumbers, and and then you put them in a mason jar. And then as soon as the brine comes up to a boil, you pour it over the peppers up to the top. You put the seal and the lid on, and then you place it right in the fridge, and then you wait for it to cool down. And what you see right here are the garden salsa peppers that I made, that I pickled. Again, it's just a ratio of one to one water to white vinegar with salt. And then I added sugar to taste with black pepper, crushed garlic, and turmeric. And what you get here are some absolutely amazing pickled peppers. Now, what's nice about pickling is it dramatically reduces the amount of spice of the peppers because those garden salsas are kind of too hot to eat raw. But when you pickle them, mm, oh my, they, they have just the right amount of crunch and just the right amount of, of spice. I could just sit here and eat them all day. Mm. And the third pepper variety that I simply must share with you is my absolute favorite pepper of all. And that is the pepper that is most commonly used in Italian American cooking, hence why I love it so much. And that is the hot cherry pepper. The hot cherry pepper is actually pretty easy to find in grocery stores, but for whatever reason, so few people grow it. And it is my favorite, and here is why. The hot cherry pepper is one of the mildest of all the hot peppers. So it's one of the few hot peppers that you could really just eat raw right off the bush without burning your face off. But it also makes awesome stuffed peppers and it also is great ground up into a hot pepper jam or brined as pickles. And they start off green and when they're green they kind of taste like a mildly spicy bell pepper but then they'll start to turn red and when they get red they will develop a wonderful sweetness to them. Now because the peppers are so small the plants tend to be extremely productive and you can see the cherry peppers all over the place. The bushes are just loaded. These small fruits set really easily and they also ripen very quickly because they're so small. So I am going to pull one of these off. And like I said, these are one of the few hot peppers that are mild enough that you could eat right off the bush. Now I have a particularly high spice tolerance, so maybe not everybody would want to do this, but I just want to prove to you that you can. Mm. Just the right amount of sweet and heat. Now, if you love pasta dishes like I do, I think the hot cherry pepper is the absolute best pepper to pair with pastas. And the way you want to make them is basically the exact same way that I made those pickled garden salsa hot peppers. Instead of cutting them in rings though, you want to dice them finely. You'll fill the mason jars up with the diced cherry peppers. You'll make the exact same brine. You'll pour the brine over the cherry peppers while it's still hot. And then you'll stick the lid on and you'll put them in the fridge to cool. And they are just absolutely fantastic. And if you're not a fan of pickled peppers, another way you can enjoy these peppers is to take a knife and run it around 
around the top in a circle and then pull out the guts and hollow out the pepper and either stuff it with goat cheese or a little square of mozzarella if you don't care for goat cheese. Put it on a baking sheet and then bake it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until they turn golden brown and the cheese is melty and gooey. And let me tell you, it's one of the finest things on earth. So much do I love cherry peppers that I have been overwintering this exact cherry pepper plant right here for three years now. In fact, I showed you how to do it and I used this exact cherry pepper as an example over three years ago and I'll link to that video down in the video description. Just check out this amazing pepper plant. It's actually turning into wood at the base. That is how hardened off this pepper plant is and it is still super productive. Because it is a small fruited pepper, it will still produce on my sunroom in January. So even throughout the winter, I still harvest fresh hot cherry peppers at my house. Oh, and by the way, if you're curious, all of these exact seeds came from the website Tomato Growers. However, they've become quite common and they're available for multiple retailers if you look online. And that right there are three varieties of peppers that I am fully obsessed with and I simply cannot live without them growing in my garden every single year. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful, entertaining, and informative, and this gave you some new ideas to think about. If you found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, I have them all linked down in my Amazon storefront in the video description, so expand that video description and click on that Amazon link for everything I use in real life. And while you're there, please check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Well, it's the 15th day of the month, and that can only mean one thing. It's time to give Dale his heartworm medication. It is very important that you give your dog a monthly heartworm preventative because all it takes for a dog to get heartworms is to be bitten by one mosquito and heartworms tend to be fatal especially down here in the south so I want to make sure that Dale gets the preventative because it's the summer they should get these all year round but especially now it is super dangerous to have a dog outside that can be bitten by a mosquito and not be on a heartworm preventative. When we do work at shelters, we lose so many dogs every single year from heartworms because it weakens their heart. They can't play, they can't run, they can barely walk. It's terrible and, and we've lost so many of them because of how weak it makes their hearts. So we don't wanna lose any more pups out there. So if you have a dog, make sure they're on a heartworm preventative.